welcome back. My name's Gordon, or This Dying Earth, and this is Soma. Uh, unfortunately, I originally recorded the first maybe hour and a half of this, um, and for some reason or another I managed to capture the audio uh, and my recording of the commentary, but the actual footage was lost, um, or was corrupted somehow, and I, I couldn't salvage it. So that was very frustrating because that was my first impressions of this game, obviously. And uh, I'm going to try and recapture that. Obviously it's going to be slightly contrived, given the fact that I played the first hour and a half. Uh, as you can see from the continue game. But, um... And yeah, so you can see there, there's from yesterday. So maybe not quite an hour. So you can see how far I got to. But um, I'll try anyway to keep it as uh, naturalistic and uh, spontaneous as I can. And uh, maybe I'll repeat myself somewhat, you know, and go over some of the things that I'd mentioned. Because some of the things that I had mentioned I think were quite interesting. And uh, anyway, moving on. This game, read a lot about it, speaking to other people. I heard a lot of positive things about the storytelling. Um, I was told it would be right up my alley. Especially, I was a big fan of Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Have I got the title of that wrong? It doesn't matter, you know the game I'm referring to. Not a uh, Machine for Pigs, which was created by the English uh, studio who recently made uh, Welcome to the Rapture or Come Along to the Rapture, some titled like that. Uh, and in Machine for Pigs, I wasn't quite as strong as um, Amnesia Dark Descent or The Dark Descent uh, in terms of storytelling. But this, I've already watched. Recent, the other day I watched, it was from, well, one of the, the, the strongest um, reasons to buy it was after watching a review, a non spoiler review on YouTube, the game. And uh, you could see how enthusiastic the, the chat was for the game. And for the story, and for the, you know, the the, he, he left, you know, he went away from the game, you know, with a lot of things to think about, and um, so it challenged him, you know, intellectually, gave him stretched his mind and imagination. So that's the kind of experience I'm looking for with this, and I hope it. I mean, from the first hour and a half that I played of it, it certainly, uh, it certainly raised not raised a lot of questions, but. I recognised a lot of things that are suggestive to be of where the story might be headed towards, um, and I'll I'll talk about them as we get into it. So we'll start a new game. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Philip K. Dick. Are you okay, Simon? I, uh, I think you're bleeding. Oh, that, that's nothing. It's just my brain can't stop bleeding from the accident. Here, take this. No, that that's for later, for the scan. It's green. It's actually Ashley, red. I need to tell you something. Simon, please don't make this weird. No, no, it's not like that. Why now? Who's David Munch? Why is there never enough time? For what? Christ. So we'll answer the phone and then I'll discuss the topics or things of that we sequence raised in my mind. Yeah, I'm up. Hi, Simon Jarrett? Yeah, that's me. My name is David Munchie. We spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? Yeah, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to remind you to drink the tracer fluid I sent you. It'll help me capture a better image of the damages. Don't worry, I, I, I got it somewhere. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Okay, see you soon. So we get our first objective, Moonshee tells us um, that we have to drink a tracer fluid and 
we have to go along to his makeshift lab in order to undergo some kind of procedure. And um, okay, so going back to the opening where did sequence. Put the tracer fluid. Yeah, unfortunately, I know exactly where it is, given that I've already played this part of the game. But anyway, um, so don't worry, Simon. We'll get to it. Simon, is he impatient at the beginning? Eh, maybe a wee bit. But uh, anyway. So the, the opening sequence is a dream sequence, and uh, initially that wasn't clear to me when I first played it, but... Radioactive tracer fluid, where are so you? So we've got the dream sequence at the start, and uh, she, you know, you get clues that it's a dream sequence, you know, when she hands him the bottle and she says it's, uh, we see it's red and she says it's green, and you don't initially realise that she's referring to the fact, the, the, the overall context of the dream is that we're in a car, we're at some kind of intersection or traffic lights and uh, she's referring to the, the change in the signal from the traffic light and um, but dreams are like that you know they, they kind of um, things merge into other you know ideas and um, you know the, the realities in your dream merge into one another and um, they can become bizarre and absurd but um, so that was one week clue and um, we also get the he exclaims that there's never enough time so when I seen that initially right off the bat you know time is such an, an integral part of our reality and everyday experience and um, the fact that it's highlighted in that opening sequence and opening images or opening sequences to any story are extremely extremely important because they are often followed at the end of the story by what's called a closing image and um, that is linked to the opening image and um, and you know, in, in conventional storytelling, the you don't develop. You're not supposed to really develop characters outside the plot development. So already, you know, if they're following the conventions of normal storytelling, then we are getting plot. You know, that that dream sequence is plot, and is going to be um, relevant to our ongoing experiences and journey through the game. So, so we we know obviously that Simon's got a head injury. We can infer that from his dream and from the conversation with Munshi. And the impression I got when I first played this was that he was involved, maybe, you know, he's having nightmares or traumas, night traumas from an experience that happened to him. Um, and perhaps with this other person uh, was involved as well, this Ashley character. And... Um, uh, well, you'll see as we go through the flat. Anyway, let's first things first. We've got this phone, so we'll go. Th this is calling for our attention with the flashing light, so we'll go to this straight away. Hey, Simon, it's Jesse. You working this weekend or what? I knew there was something you were doing. Was it this weekend or next? Anywho, just shoot me a mail or something. Love you, miss you, mean it. End of messages. I swear that guy has the Jesse. memory of a goldfish. I even sent an email to remind him, didn't I? And uh, memory, maybe memory is important in this game as well. We're going to turn on the light. The controls in this game are, you know, similar or exact to Amnesia. So if you've played any of these kind of games before, Sounds then scary. you know. I hope it's a good one. Nice birdies flying off, pigeons. And um, this actually looks European to be this backyard, these flats I mean this this could apart from the air conditioning units which flats in Scotland don't really have unless you live in a very swanky one but um, yeah in general you know, this could actually be like Glasgow where I live or yeah, minus the air conditioning so Grimoire so there's lots of wee clues in Simon's flat about what he does and who he is you can see he's got like an interest in popular science movie um, with these posters and um, a fan of literature. It's, it's some kind of band to take it into France. Interference, I guess that's supposed to be maybe. Um, and flower. I think this is a flower petal. And this is actually very important because in a moment I'll talk about probably the thing that jumped out most to me when I played this yesterday for the first time. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll get to it in a second anyway. So let's let's have a wee gander around the guy's room. Uh -huh. So you can pick up and interact with objects. 
and uh, there are some objects like this book that um, give you a wee bit more context to the surroundings. So we've got this book, Robin McConnell Hooked, and in the back we've got the blurb. And I'm not going to read all this because I read it all yesterday, but... Um, yeah, the, 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 you know, the ocean, we've got the idea of the ocean and something beneath the waves um, that's malicious and, you know, normally tendrils, like if you see at the bottom, they're desperate to get out of the harm's way, their seven-year-old son Charlie's caught by the vicious tendrils. Normally tendrils are not vicious, they're just, you know, floating in the water and they do whatever they do, uh, you know, they extend from the jellyfish or whatever. Um, I've actually been stung by a jellyfish and motherfucker, that was a serious pain in the ass um, and I, it was sore. Uh, actually paralysed. I was stung under the right armpit and it actually was paralysed temporarily uh, down my left hand side and uh, I couldn't swim. I was trying to swim from like a raft that was like maybe 50 or 100 metres away from shore and um, I really struggled to get back because I could only use one side of my body and the people I was with panicked and uh, couldn't get out of the water quick enough so uh, the, the, the medical station was closed so I had to use urine so I got a golden shower that day um, because they deactivate the the stingers. The only golden shower I've ever had. And hopefully the only one I'll ever have. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's this idea as well, like water and storytelling represents the subconsciousness. So, you know, the, under the water represents the things in your subconscious mind that um, are sub, you know, suppressed or submerged and you're not even familiar with them and they can be, you know, things that are unfamiliar can be scary. Anyway, let's move on, let's move on. So we've got this computer again, it's calling out for our attention. So let's just look at that first. From Munshi, Neurograph session, we already know we have to do that. So, and this gives us confirmation of where we are, we're in Toronto. I've been to Toronto, it's a fantastic city, loved it a lot. And Pace Laboratories and from Dr. Erin Peake so she obviously prescribed the tracer fluid for on Munchie's behalf um, Prazozone Prazone Prazozin something like that um, so that's to help with the nightmares and yeah we get this you know with this idea that our brain is that you know it's in a very fragile state and uh, any kind of trauma or um, excess could cause it to, you know, to, to basically, yeah, you could bleed to death, you know, and to, to be knocked out of equilibrium or whatever. Um, I actually had a friend, this is one of the things I mentioned in the original commentary, I actually had a friend that uh, passed away from a subdural hematoma, um, a very tragic series of events. This happened maybe 20, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, shared, him and I shared the same name and we'd known each other since we were parents or uh, young kids. And I uh, don't want to get too gloomy, but yeah, um, so, something very similar happened to this chap. Um, he fell off his bike, hit his head, was taken to hospital. The nurses and doctors believed that um, he was drinking or on drugs, despite the fact that he was a teenager, maybe 13, 14, 14 or 15, maybe. Yeah, 14, 15, 16. 15. And um, they believed that he was on the substances I just mentioned. Um, and one thing led to another, and he was eventually arrested by police officers. And he was, his mum was present with him at the time, and obviously put up a massive struggle and um, was infuriated and you know, everything rolled into one, um, but couldn't dissuade the police officers from, you know, de-arresting him. He was taken to a local police station, Aikenhead Police Station in Glasgow, where he, um, where his uh, brain injury continued to develop, and the, the hematoma uh, continued to bleed into the cavity, brain cavity. That put pressure on his spinal column, and um, caused, eventually, respiratory failure. Um, because what happens eventually is that your, you know, your spinal column contains the ancient part of the brain that's responsible for respiration and 
the electroconductivity of the heart and von Euler, the medulla oblongata, which is the section of the brainstem. And so if you put pressure in the cat, if you would start to fill the cavity up with fluid, a fluid like blood, it starts to increase the weight on top of the brainstem. Eventually it just you know, compresses the stem to the extent that it can't function. And that's what happened to Gordon. And um, yeah, by the, the time the police surgeon rushed him back to the hospital, he was, he'd already suffered uh, irre irreversible you know, brain damage. Um, and I believe the, the ventilator was removed um, and he passed and it was a tragic series of events and yeah. brain injuries are, you know, tr you know they, they can develop so quickly, you know, from innocuous to dangerous within a matter of moments and uh, sometimes the symptoms, you know, can be uh, mistaken for things like drunkenness um, but you've always got to be vigilant and it, it just it surprises me that doctors and nurses could have made such a, a tragic error but you know we're all human and maybe well let, the, the less said about it the better let's move on so what we got here we've got pictures of presumably this is us and then we see the grimoire again and uh, presumably this is again maybe the girl that was in the car with us she looks a bit different but you know, in dreams, people can look different. So, we get some nice uh, scenic photographs. And this is the prescription for the Gadgetan 755, which is obviously some kind of isotope. These contrast fluids are required for certain scans. Um, they, they, they fill in, you know, the, into tissues, uh, into, you know, capillaries and your the arterial system. And uh, yeah, and, and the contrast can be used to measure rates of change, or it can be used to see changes in um, structure of different tissues. Uh, I've actually had a tracer fluid inserted before um, when I had a, had a grand mal seizure when I was younger due to um, a 3D Panasonic 3DO of all things. But anyway, uh, so this is what Simon was um, prescribed, and this is what we're going to find, going to go and look for. And um, yeah, we get an important piece of information here. Yesterday, a driver distracted by her children ran a red light, causing her to blindside a car in the intersection of Bloor Street and Sp Spadina Road. The mother and her children, travelling in a robust SUV, were left bruised but largely unharmed. The other party was less lucky. As the car crashed into the passenger side, Ashley Hall, 23, sustained devastating damages and suffocated from blood trapped in the lungs. Terrible, terrible way. Poor, poor girl. Terrible way to go. Her friend and driver Simon Jarrett survived, but with complicated results, believed to leave him with permanent pain damage. And you can see the extent of devastation of the damage below, and it looks like. Uh, in reality, though, unless that picture was taken, you can't see us in there, yeah? So that's not a very realistic picture of the, or a very realistic depiction of what would actually it would look like, because the standard protocol for uh, paramedics and fire uh, men is to actually remove the roof under such circumstances because in case you've got a head injury uh, or a neck, a spinal, call it, spinal cord injury if you were to remove somebody through the door you know, you could complicate things or even exasperate the, the problem so under normal protocol that, that roof would be cut before we are removed and it looks like we are not in there so that's, that's not a realistic depiction of an accident but anyway, we get confirmation here about what's happened to us um, the other thing up? No. Um, and then we've got this get well card from our mum which is very nice of her and you can do this as well if you want to see uh, the text clearer um, this note, wee notepad this brings me to something important first of all we've got I think that's our wee drawing maybe we're sad and you've got the spiral here and I started to notice this sort of playing yesterday the spiral keep the spiral diagram or graphic keeps popping up and cropping up in the game and um, it started to make me think and I've mentioned spirals in previous uh, videos maybe for alien isolation because spirals have very specific um, associations um, with spirituality and with uh, the human psyche and the human experience and the spiral things like the uh, triskele um, markings and rocks made by the Celts um, 
you know, it's one of the first signs that man made uh, to demonstrate that he stands above the animals, you know, that he stands above the animal kingdom, that the, the human, the man and his woman and their brains and their um, emotional states and everything it means to be a human um, can be um, denoted or represented by art or symbols and um, who was it that said it's not what was it, it's not politics, it's not words and numbers that rule the world as symbols, somebody some genius or somebody said something along those lines and um, symbolism is you know, so important to our experience of uh, reality and um, the way we express ourselves but I'll get into that more as we go on so I, I wanted to see a mirror in here the first time I came in but there's none and um, I, we get wee clues as well that maybe Simon's suffering from memory problems which you would expect from a, a, a traumatic head injury we get a wee DVD cover here uh, not really sure what the significance of this is a pizza box in like our comforts or home comforts and uh, again we get clues here, mapping minds. Widely praised as one of the most comprehensive yet accessible texts about the anatomy of the human brain, its function and our perceptions of consciousness. Find out how your brain is dependent on its body, why the brain is simply not a computer, and a multitude of other interesting facts that will make your head spin. <laughs> this edition also, and then we get the spin the spiral again. This edition also includes two new chapters about development of the brain, how it affects our behaviour in different stages of our lives. And this game, you know, the impression I got from, you know, before I played it um, was that this game had themes about identity, consciousness, um, environmentalism, um, and, yeah, it felt, you know, it raised philosophical questions that are, you know, hard to answer. Um, anyway. To do, remind Jesse, pick up meds and flowers for funeral. So it looks like you know if you're to make an inference here, it, it, maybe you're inferring that the girl we've seen in the dream is the one that died. And I don't know what her association with us is. Was she our girlfriend, friend, family, lover? I don't know. And um, so that just reminded me actually to remind Jesse. Oh, I forgot so, to hit send. I think that, yeah, like I say, Simon's maybe suffering from uh, memory problems. So I'll just send this. Better late than never. Uh, where is that? I actually can't even remember where that... Thing maybe is. it's just... Maybe this massive recoil thing is a, you know, is a, a small stab, a, a small criticism towards the state of uh, you know, storytelling maybe in the, the big Hollywood studios. Damn, my memory's going wonky. I was sure that thing was in here. That was really there it confusing. Is. I'm sure that was over there yesterday when I did that. Right. Gadgetan 755, so an isotope of some sort. Radioactive. It feels like milk. I'll take a taste, swig of water myself. It's like sucking on a penny. Perhaps there's some metallic substance in there, like copper or iron, something like that. So let's get... Oh, I've got this later here, what's this? To Simon Jarrett. And at first when I see this, because this is one of the first things I did yesterday when I, I, went, I started playing the game, I went and looked at, over here, looked at this later, and I seen 6th of June 2049, but I don't think we're in the future, I think this is just contemporary. So I don't know, maybe that's just the way the postage stamps are, and... Toronto maybe represent something else and not that actual year. Nothing but fast food. You should buy something healthier. Simon, you just had a traumatic head injury. Enjoy yourself. Yes, eat healthy, but enjoy yourself too. Um. So yeah, I think we're finished here. Uh, oh yeah, the, the so the spirals. So just remember, we've got like this petal here, and I started to talk about. 
well, I'll talk about it in a moment. Yeah, yesterday I couldn't quite understand the purpose of this uh, transition. So, there must be something here that we're supposed to see, or do, or something. I can't move though. But, I don't understand why they would include this. Um, if it's just for the phone call, because presumably we could do this when we get to the laboratory. Jesse. Hey Simon, I got your email. Just wanted to wish you good luck and let you know I got you covered. Thanks. I should be able to come to the store after the scan. Don't sweat it. I got Matt and Chris help me out. Matty from SNL? Uh, guess you didn't hear him. He's coming in full time, working the comic section. That's Ashley's job. Yeah, well, I know. Forget uh, it. Maybe that's the reason. Not doing her any favors by leaving an empty spot. Not like she's coming back. Well, good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know, Dying thing. <laughs> dying thing? You're the worst support ever. <laughs> what should I say? I'll see you later, Jesse. Don't burn the place down while I'm gone. Over and out, buddy. So maybe that's the reason. Oh, the PC phone. I'm sure that guy said something there. Um, yeah, maybe that's the reason. Maybe it was simply just to confirm that. But yeah, again, why could they not just do that at the laboratory, you know, as we're entering the laboratory? Maybe it's just they want to show you, you know, that it's Toronto. Hello? Um, Dr. And Munchie? It's you know, we're in 2015 or something like that, and it's not, you know, 2049. Where again, is it? Wow, that's beautiful. I thought this place would be busy. Canadian flag. Um, yeah, so we get confirmation there that we've got a traumatic brain injury that's potentially fatal. Um, or maybe we are dying, like the guy Jesse said, but he said it in such an irreverent way. Uh, such a casual way that it suggests to me that maybe we're not actually dying, but we have, you know, got traumatic brain injury. Um, Ashley, we got confirmation there that she's the one that passed away, and like you said, she won't be coming back. But I get the impression from the way you mentioned her that it wasn't a girlfriend, maybe just a colleague. Uh, the way Simon talked about her, because presumably if that was your girlfriend, you'd sound a lot more cut up about that. But who knows? Um, so yeah, like I say, I've been to Toronto before, absolutely beautiful city, I loved it. Um, Marvelled at the CN Tower, looked up at it, couldn't believe the size of it, and loved the ice cream that I got at the bottom of it. And we've seen this uh, this amazing building, I think it was like some kind of government building. It was like two hands, it's supposed to, the way the architecture is, it's supposed to like represent two hands with like a heart in the middle or something like that. Um, which I thought was quite cool. So, there's a code that's required for this door. And, um, place, I know the right? code anyway, I can remember it. Let's just call Machi real quick. Great. Why have we got a picture of the guy? That's I okay. thought I wondered that yesterday. Figure this out. So yeah, the... This laptop gives us confirmation about the endeavour that Munshi and his collaborator Paul Berg are undertaking. You can see Paul Berg up there on the top left. And uh, they are they are basically um, trying to develop a system that would allow simulations to be run on data that relates to your injury or illness. And, you know, all the permutations from all the different medications that are available to treat an illness like that could be, you know, run through the simulation and you could get the, the, the best, the optimal uh, treatment plan. And in theory, I mean, if, if we were able to come up with that, you know, kind of system and um, work out the mathematics for it and computing uh, problems associated with that kind of uh, problem, because that's the kind of intractable, intractable computing problem that, in one hand, seems you know impossible to to um, solve for, you know, to, to take all the different possibilities relating to the human body. Uh, and all the interactions that are available through the cells and through the different organs and systems that are in place in the body and to try to find, you know, the optimal treatment plan for a patient it just seems like a problem that would be very difficult to solve for um, and if we could do it these guys, Munchi and Berg, would be Nobel Prize winners and be, you know, such a boon to um, human health and human development because we'd be able to, you know, almost solve everything um, or, you know, work out, not solve, but we could at least get to maybe the problem, the root cause of problems and whatnot with a lot more ease. Um, so it's like a diagnostic tool, but also 
a tool that allows them to, yeah, like I say, find the, the solution to your medical problem. Um, I just noticed there actually, again, we've got the spirals, and this is like the triskele, um, or triskeleon, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, or the way to pronounce it, um, symbology, which these kelts would carve it into rocks and into cave faces and whatnot, and um, the Christians assimilated the, the meaning, or uh, basically altered the meaning of it um, from the Celtic paganism religions. Um, they, the Christians um, claimed it represented the Holy Spirit, so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, but yeah, see, the spiral, I'm wondering if I should go into this now or I should wait. Um, I see there's the spiral again, you know, it just it keeps cropping up, it keeps cropping up, and it's there for a reason. So I'm going to get into it just now. Right. When I seen it yesterday, and maybe it was about this point that I started to started to tweak in my head. Um, it's always these kind of things are always in the back of our mind anyway. But um, you know, sometimes the uh, storytelling, the spiral, is representative of our journey like, inwards towards you know away from materialism and uh, egotism and towards your soul, towards your connectedness with the universe and your um, yeah your essence. Um, and also from the alternative perspective, you could say it's actually the opposite journey. It's the journey from, you know, the single cell that you were in your mother's womb, all the way, you know, outwards to you being a fully realized human body, interacting in the world, you know, going about your daily business and your, your place and connection to the universe. Um, and it's, you know, it's just, it's amazing because, you know, we, it's true, we all go from single cell organism or single cell thing inside the mother's womb to becoming, you know, a body made up of billions and trillions of cells that have all got their wee tasks and um, agendas and, you know, what not. Agendas, that makes them sound like they're sentient. But, you know, they've all got their wee jobs to do. And, um, you know, all these cells are connected to the splendor and complexity of the universe and all the processes that are involved just to get you here and, you know, experiencing this, what we're doing right now. I mean, it's just unfathomable, you know, the complexity and the the probability of you being here and listening to this is just so small. And, you know, it's just, I think at, at one point I was a materialist and, you know, an atheist or and not an atheist. I don't think I've ever been an atheist, but agnostic. I mean, again, this is just my beliefs and um, current, you know, state of mind, subject to change like everyone else's is, and it has changed in the past. But um, the older I get, the more I think that there's more to this uh, reality and more to existence than meets the eye. Um, that there's maybe things beyond our five senses that are um, out there that, you know, maybe we are just incapable of perceiving uh, in this state of being that we're in just now in this. Uh, anyway, let's move on. But um, I'll, I'll continue to come back to these kind of topics because I've got a lot more to say about the spiral. And uh, also, it made me think of because this is this is a game about big questions, about big concepts, about the big mis mysteries of reality. You know, consciousness, identity, why we're here, what we're here for. And um, you know, and you can, even walking in here, you know, my was caught by this. The fact that we can see this, you know, which is a real astronomical phenomenon, uh, you know, this is like a, the remnants of a, a gamma ray burst or a star that's exploded and spread its elements, you know, the heavy elements throughout the universe. And that's how, you know, we're here because stars have exploded. If stars, if the universe didn't have a mechanism by which it could spread the atoms, you know, heavy atoms, um, like uranium and so on, Sorry. Hello, Paul. How are you? Okay, I'll have to leave it here because I've got something to do. Somebody's just come in the house and I have some a wee important task to take care of. So I'll leave it here and we'll continue tomorrow. But, um, yeah, there's a lot to think about in this game and I've not even scratched the surface. And like I say, even... Although I've only played maybe another 20 minutes ahead of here, uh, the game is already 
fascinating me and tantalizing me and you know piquing my curiosity and i can't wait to see where it goes so i hope you guys want to join me in this journey and um the more viewers the better um, and md that you know thanks the person that keeps up voting the dark souls videos thank you very much i'm genuinely appreciative of you doing that um and more dark souls videos will come um, as time goes on so yeah I hope you guys join me as we make our way through SOMA. Thanks for watching.